All right. Well, Mr. Hayashi, it's a great honor to yeah. uh, have you here with us at Purdue University, mm -hmm. and we give you a, a very warm welcome from the College of Education. Thank you very much. So what, what excites you about being here on Purdue's campus today? Ah, uh, first of all, it's very um, much my honor mm -hmm. to be invited and uh, to have a speaking opportunities and discussion with the student. And uh, first of all, I was really uh, fascinated by the size of the campus. <laughs> And also, uh, more, uh, <coughs> more actually impressed by the uh, students talking about agriculture are uh, belonging to the education department. Yes. An education department with the cross relation with the agriculture department. So you are doing very nice uh, co-op between those two to have a nice curriculum for education in agriculture or yes. agriculture education. So that's my big impression here. Thank you. Yeah, we're very proud of that model. So mm. speaking of education, you have a, a master's in public administration ah, from the John F. Ago. Kennedy School <laughs> many years ago, John F. Kennedy School at Harvard. Yeah. And uh, it's also very interesting that you've got experience working on Capitol Hill. Mm. You worked for a congressman and a senator as a legislative staffer. Yes. So I'm curious how your education experience here in the United States helped mm. prepare you for your distinguished career in public service in Japan. Well, yeah, so that uh, my college was in Tokyo, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, compared to the Tokyo University, the Kennedy School is uh, flexible, mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, now I see the difference is less number of the subject, so that the time consumed for one subject. Mm -hmm. For example, the uh, for one 90 minutes a classroom, I have to read almost 30, 40, 50 pages of the documents so that uh, you have to prepare for the class. Mm -hmm. And also there's a class time so that I can visit all those uh, uh, professors mm -hmm. in some uh, time frame. So that's the things I feel. Um, on the top of that, I encounter the Socrates method. The Socratic method? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was my culture shock that I saw that uh, at the end of the class, teacher provide us with the final answer. Mm -hmm. So we are waiting after debate and debate, and professor says, oh, this was a great debate. Goodbye. Huh? So <laughs> that's my culture, culture shock. But afterward, I learned that in the real world, there's no final answer. Mm -hmm. So the debate itself is a learning process. Absolutely. Big learning. Absolutely. And what was your experience like on Capitol Hill working as a staff? Capitol Hill is, is a little soothing um, uh, experience. Mm -hmm. And so many things I uh, experienced. But the uh, most interesting point I found out is the uh, in Japan, when you legislate the bill, mm -hmm. you have to go through all oh, maybe one, two, three months checking in the legislative council. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when we dropped the bill in Capitol Hill, I asked my fellows, uh, workers there, that uh, let's go to the, you know, legislative council. Mm -hmm. uh, where is legislative council? And he said, what is legislative council? So we finally found out the place, mm -hmm. but we will, we go there to find that that place is really for typing place. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we I found out there is a big difference between U.S. and maybe in, including British law system mm -hmm. is uh, Anglo-Saxon, whereas ours and maybe German or uh, French is the continental. Mm -hmm. So continental needs uh, more, you know, they are more less uh, uh, accepting the discrepancy between the new law and existing laws, whereas mm -hmm. the Anglo-Saxon system really uh, uh, put the priority for the new passing laws. So that's the things I really, uh, you know, learn as a difference mm -hmm. in between those two systems. Fascinating. Yeah. So how did that experience uh, help you when you went back to Japan and got involved in public service and politics? Yeah, that's a big uh, learning process in, in the Congress, uh, congressional offices in Capitol Hill, and also the learning things, the courses in Kennedy School, such mm -hmm. as uh, 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 press and politics, and also uh, security issues, mm -hmm. so that uh, we can actually 
views that uh, cases we learned in Kennedy School for uh, financial reform in Japan after I became a, a member of the parliament. And also, uh, pleasant politics give, gives us a nice uh, view about how to deal with the place scopes in mm. Japan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, that gives me some a nice start as a young and a beginning start in the statesman in Japan. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, today, you talked earlier with the students about uh, the technologies mm -hmm. that can help address global issues of poverty and food security. Mm -hmm. And you also talked about you know, the skills that people need. And so, yes. what, what can K-12 education systems in both Japan and the United States do to help students develop these skills that will further develop these technologies? Yeah. Uh, since uh, the, the society becomes more like with the AI mm -hmm. and also robot, so that uh, it is some, according to some research, maybe the jobs that uh, robot and AI can replace us is up to almost 50% of mm -hmm. the jobs ex existing now. So remaining for human is more for uh, communication, feeling, and uh, a sensitivity and sense of the beauty mm -hmm. and all those things. Plus, remaining 50% will be replaced by AI or robot, but you have to manage how to use the AI and robot and some, somehow like you maintain the machine in the factory mm -hmm. or even the build the factory, yeah. you, you, can, you, you have to do that for AI and robot so that uh, so those communication skill and also the data skill mm -hmm. are both very important. So those skills, I think in the U.S. education system, you have a more debate and class team working mm -hmm. and like uh, Socrates method. So what we are trying to do in Japan are also that kind of uh, interaction between students mm -hmm. uh, presided by the teacher. So we named that as active learning, active learning. versus passive learning. So that uh, that is the one of the key points. Mm. And also studying the programming uh, education at the early stage. So that the next year from that April, we start the programming in the uh, uh, grade three or four. Wow. Yeah. Grade yeah. three or four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So I guess related to that, during your, your time as the Minister of Education, Culture, mm. Sports, Science and Technology, mm. what, what were some of your priorities for the education system and what are some of the successes that you saw during your time? Yeah, so that uh, so we have a discussion group about how Society 5.0 will label that as the next society mm -hmm. with AI and uh, robot and I IoT, and we came up with those three skills like communication and the data processing and sense for the beauty and all those things. So then we came to the intelligent conclusion that maybe somebody can do the math better than as a, as a student mm -hmm. and somebody can do the Japanese better than else so that uh, maybe the class curriculum could be more customized. Mm -hmm with the help of uh, IT gadget, uh, without the teachers doing more and more hard work, mm -hmm. maybe we can customize the curriculum for each student. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we will be having a school uh, record or log yes. for each student. Maybe that might replace all those tests, tests, tests. But uh, and also entrance examination, sometimes those logs can be you know, utilize so that you can really check the more more uh, more time for skills like communication and other things. Fascinating. So, like mm -hmm. having a individualized education plan for each student mm -hmm. based on their strengths and interests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could you say more? I, I was really intrigued when you talked about you know helping students gain a sense of beauty. Mm -hmm. and how that can be related to solving some of these problems in the future. Can you, can you talk more about that? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> if you uh, utilize the uh, AI or robots, they, you don't have to calculate or, you know, mm -hmm. backcasting all the data, 
but they do those things. But the, what they cannot do is the feeling the beauty or feeling the sadness or mm -hmm. you know, and that creates the drama or movie or whatever. So that uh, for a consumption market, mm -hmm. that might be one of the main things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so in that. Uh, uh, the basic learning is maybe starting with listening to the classic music and also nice uh, pictures, but then that might be a little bit difficult, but uh, it doesn't have to be the same as other fellows. Mm -hmm. So how to be very independently feeling the beauty and at the same time you know the basic classics. Yeah. So that uh, still we are struggling with that, uh, how to connect with those two things, mm -hmm. seemingly different. Yeah, that's fantastic. I guess related to that, what do you see as some of the big challenges for educating students, um, both in Japan and the United States, but even globally? Because I know you've also been involved in a lot of development work around the world. Mm -hmm. So what do you see as the biggest challenges for education moving in the 21st century beyond uh, yeah. the issues you described? I think it's uh, one of the things we are worrying, not worrying, but thinking about as a, as a uh, <coughs> agenda is to teach the teachers. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for, uh, you know, active learning or new data processing mm -hmm. or even sensing the beauty, they never teach before. Yes. So that they have to learn how to teach those new things. And for, for like this gadget, mm -hmm. maybe the student knows better than the teachers. <laughs> so and uh, that's one problem. And another problem is when you la start learning to use this mm -hmm. in maybe elementary school or junior high, when you graduate the college and join the society, maybe there's no iPhone in 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. So that uh, rather than just learning how to use the machine, maybe learning the main way of thinking under this, what we call algorithm, mm -hmm. so that those things are really have to be learned by children. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, when you teach the people in the, you know, the elementary school, what is algorithm is, nobody's really interested in. So maybe using fun game or, mm -hmm. you know, making some uh, animation or those kind of things uh, might be the good uh, starting kit. Great. Yeah, those are definitely um, challenges that we're facing here as well, especially mm -hmm. when you have teachers who have been teaching for a long time, <laughs> getting them to accept the new ways of teaching and things mm -hmm. like that. So, mm -hmm. um, very good. Let me, uh, just one final question. Um, what can the United States learn from the Japanese education and vice versa? What can the Japanese education learn from the United States? Yeah, basically I think uh, uh, public education in up to maybe sixth, ninth grade mm -hmm. are working very well. So that uh, in an area uh, which are not so wealthy areas, still they are trying to do things after the real uh, you know, uh, school hours are ended, they still remain in school and teaching something that they couldn't understand today. So mm -hmm. that that kind of things are a very good part of the Japanese public school in the early time. So, but uh, if we go from junior high, senior high to college, then uh, we have more things to learn from U.S. system mm -hmm. that we are trying to you know, what, what, we, what I learn and see here is the things that we really want to change in Japanese uh, higher education. So mm -hmm. flexibility and the close department and major minors and research and development with, together with the business sectors, everything that we are trying to catch up so that those are the, really the strengths of the, the you know, U.S. Uh, education system. I think. Fantastic. Well, it's been a great honor talking to you, and yeah, thank, thank you so you much for your much. visit. Oh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs>